Good afternoon, everyone. I would like you all to take a moment and reflect. I want you all to think a little bit about your childhood. Because unless I'm sorely mistaken, we all had one of those. So was that riding a bike? Was that building a blanket fort? Was that exploring the woods? We all have some awesome experience. And no how, matter how crappy our childhoods were, right? There's got to be something that you can remember that ignited your imagination and creativity. I got to breathe a little, listen to the shakiness. For me, I had an awesome childhood. It was amazing. I played Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I was always Michelangelo. You can't go wrong with orange and pizza. I used to take my cat bike riding. Yep, that's a thing. You zip him in, little heads out. <laughs> we would ride. He'd always escape. <laughs> I would build forts. I'd, I'd do hikes in the moonlight. So my, my imagination and creativity knew no bounds. I couldn't, I couldn't stop. It was awesome. Legos, Barbies with my sister. You're welcome. So when I started my degree at Central Washington University, the second one, recreation management, I, I took a class. And in this class, our uh, professor, Dr. Vance, did one lecture on adventure playgrounds. And I had no idea what this was. And then images started to pop up like this one. And this one is in Australia. And it's bright colors. And it's all these random items, I mean, tires, and poles. Or like this one here in Germany, it's constantly growing and has been since 1990. It just evolves. Or this one here, I don't know if you can see, but there's like a Playmobil type thing over here and a door over there. Nothing but bright colors. And what I learned was that they derived, adventure playgrounds derived after World War I, when C. Thornson realized that kids preferred to play in the rubble of bombed out buildings instead of traditional playground structures. Now, now why is this? Well, if you'll remember your own childhood, you're, you're probably starting to understand why. We all wanted to do this. So in Europe, adventure playgrounds are huge. They're vast. They're everywhere. They're community-based. They're parks and recreation-based. They're all of these things. So why aren't they here in the United States? Well, believe it or not, back in the 70s and the 60s, before we decided we wanted to sue one another to make a quick buck, we had adventure playgrounds. And this is how I learned. So in 2009, Paul West, who works for the city of Mercer Island, wrote a grant, and he said, you know what, I want to put an adventure playground in. And my boss at the time, Superintendent Diane Mortensen, she said, let's do it. And then they said, Anne, we want you to be a part of this team. And I said, great. I have no idea what I'm doing. None. I had one lecture. And this is almost an archaic thing. So what did I do? I did research. And a lot of it was google.co.uk being my new BFF. And a lot of it led me to reports like this. And this was a piece of the, uh, the research I wasn't expecting. This research talked a lot about what's going on with kids today and play, <laughs> or more importantly, the lack thereof. So I learned terms like helicopter parenting, or hover parenting. I learned about bubble wrapped kids. What is this? Bubble wrapped kids? Is this a thing? Really? I learned, uh, wow, for the most part, kids don't play, right? They have apps and iPads. They have video games. They have movies. Everything that they need to play, they have. And do you know what? All of that was derived from folks who'd use their imagination as kids. And subsequently, as adults, we're able to make that for them. Whoa, well, this is scary stuff. 
for me, you know? This is scarier than trying to figure out how to open up an adventure playground. So in case you're wondering, this research, bubble wrap kids, this means they, they don't take risks, right? So there's a lot of things that are associated with not taking risks as a child. Um, I read one full comprehensive report that looked at the fact that kids who take risks when they're younger actually proceed with caution when they're teenagers and, and in their 20s. So what does this mean exactly? Think about safe sex or lack thereof. Think about drug use, alcoholism. Kids don't want to intentionally hurt themselves. And in fact, I had only one kiddo out of hundreds who stepped on a nail because she was wearing inappropriate footwear. Hundreds of kids. So kids don't want to hurt themselves, and they, they need these. So that leads us into helicopter parenting. And I didn't want to believe that to be true either, you know? My parents were like, go out, don't come back until the sun sets, or it's dinner time. So they, they're there, they're doing everything for their kids. And with the state of technology today, the convenience allows for them to just hand over an iPad or turn on a television and allow kids to be absorbed but not actually engaged. Well, that's some heavy stuff as I'm about to open something awesome and wonderful. So open it. And I don't want this to be true. I don't want, I don't want kids not playing to be true. I chose really bright colors. Keep in mind my own childhood. I hope you like that Michelangelo orange that I'm rocking right there. And here are some images of Mercer Island's adventure playground. We brought in all kinds of non-toxic materials. Come on, clicker. There we go. There's the staff. All of these images, I want you to keep in mind. This is a swing. I don't know if you recognize it as such. We had rope and PVC pipe, and there's a tire, obviously. But there, there she is on the swing. And all of this was done because I allowed, was a part, rather, of a team that allowed kids to come play. And on the very first day, I opened the adventure playground, and all these people, this young lady comes up and she had her toolbox, because that's what we did. We gave them toolboxes with hammers and saws and nails and everything. And she said, what do I do? And I said, what do you mean, what do you do? You build. And she said, build what? And I said, anything you can imagine. And she just stared at me. Well, that's terrifying because everything I had read and researched about for months was in my face true. And I could not help but feel a little bit terrified. So two weeks later, you'll be happy to know, she built an awesome castle. There was a moat that she dug around the tree and was contentedly playing. So what does this mean? Well, Brene Brown, who did a phenomenal TED Talk on vulnerability, is quoted as saying, if we want to live a wholehearted life, we have to become intentional about cultivating rest and play. And we must work to let go of exhaustion as a status symbol and productivity as self-worth. So I don't have kids by any means. And I don't know if I will. But I truly, truly, truly believe that all of us can play a part in kids and development because I don't know about you, but I don't want to not have movies. I don't want to not have books. I mean, J.K. Rowling, J.R.R. Tolkien, these are all people who have used their imagination to create something we all enjoy. So if kids don't continue to tap into their imagination, they are not gonna create. And furthermore, not creating is also a lack of innovation. Take a look around you. Everything here is at some point derived from somebody's creativity and imagination. 
Our iPhones, thank you Steve Jobs, totally his imagination. The car, the airplane, at some point somebody decided to think outside the box and we ended up with these amazing things, completely, truly wonderful things. So I don't have kids, but I definitely, definitely think that we need to start talking about this more. And are Adventure Playgrounds the only solution? Not at all. I like to think of Legos as like a pocket adventure playground. You just pick up a box, you just open it up, and you play. I mean, how cool is that? You don't need much at all. I play. <laughs> Look at me. I am probably 27. 28 years old in this photo. Blanket fort. It was of epic proportion. We tucked the uh, television in there and uh, slumber partied overnight. We used music stands, cross country skis, and downhill skis, and just about every type of blanket you could imagine. I play to inspire. This is little my, my little cousins here. This is on Easter just a couple weeks ago. We had the most epic Nerf gun fight you could imagine. It's probably one of the best Easters ever. But it's contagious. You can see my aunt. She decided to join in. I play because it's so much fun. Who doesn't remember building a snowman and how great snow days were when you were a kid? So, hey, it's 10.30 at night. There's nine inches of snow on the ground. Let's go build a snowman. Take some time to swing. There's nothing more exhilarating than sitting on a swing. That's my sister, by the way. I apologize for the selfie action. You can see the arm outstretched there. <laughs> I challenge you all to try and take a selfie on a swing. It's not as easy as it looks. And we're actually moving, so that's even more impressive, I think. And smile. If nothing else, play should ignite some type of smile. Just have fun. Because here are my thoughts. If you can, can at least have a dialogue about why this is important, maybe that can spread like a ripple effect. And even though you don't have kids and I don't have kids, maybe that dialogue can continue and continue and continue and ignite some type of change. Because it's my belief that change starts with dialogue. And dialogue leads to action. And action leads to change. And in this case, hopefully change continues to lead to innovation and creativity. And that is my idea worth spreading. Thank you so much.